Let's get to Guggenheim Partners Research Analyst and Senior Managing Director John DeFucci to discuss the Cloud Giant's latest results. John, right now we're looking at Salesforce stock that's up more than 12%. What is your key takeaway from yesterday's announcements and results? Key takeaway is Salesforce is doing something that they always could have done, but they chose not to. There's nothing in this model that would preclude Salesforce from seeing the kind of profit you'd expect from a company of this scale. They just chose not to. It's a cultural thing. Um, they just went after growth. Uh, that was the paramount focus. Now they're, they're, their growth isn't there. They don't have the same kind of growth. By the way, it's, it's not just the economy. There are things happening with Salesforce. They started to falter a few years ago when I think, I think it had something to do with the, the previous co-CEO, not Brett Taylor, but Keith Block when he left. Um, I think there was a change there. It, it became less of an enterprise company, but, but, but they could have always done this and they can do this. It's not like they're not going to be able to do this. They're, they are, they, if, if you look at what's, what Salesforce spends on sales and marketing relative to the new business they sign, it's they spend about a dollar ninety for every one dollar of new business. That's compared to their peers, which are you know five times smaller than them. Workday and, and ServiceNow spends about a dollar forty. So right there, you can take over a third of sales and marketing out, out of Salesforce and probably not have a huge effect on, on growth. Um, it'll have some effect on them. Uh, John, you mentioned uh, Keith Block, who used to be co-CEO of Salesforce. We want to show you a chart actually of some of the uh, high level executives who have left Salesforce. Keith Block, uh, Brett Taylor, uh, co-CEO, uh, also Stuart Butterfield, founder of uh, Slack. We, so if just looking at this chart and also um, paying attention to what uh, uh, Benioff said when he spoke to Brian Sazi about a succession, uh, in place, who do you think could be inside the company that could be a successor to Mark Benioff? Listen, I think there's probably a lot of really good people inside of Salesforce. However, I do believe that a lot of their enterprise talent left over the last, I don't know, two years or so, three years. Um, they still can sell really well to the mid market. Like um, Brian Millen is a is a good sales leader. He really is, and he's great at the mid market. He's very metrics driven, um, and I have a lot of respect for him. I don't know him personally, but I have a lot of respect for him. They don't really have a lot of enterprise leadership, and I'm not sure who's there that can do that. Um, and that takes a different skill set. That might they might have to bring someone else in from the outside for that. Uh, one of the activist investors, uh, Elliot, uh, who, Elliot, who put out a statement last night, uh, basically talking about the changes and uh, also saying that Salesforce needs a sustainable leadership plan and a board that demonstrates it can provide accountability through proper oversight. Not all the activist investors, though, put out statements after this print uh, was released. So. I guess my question is, do you think that what was announced yesterday was uh, enough to sort of appease the activist concerns? So uh, I, I saw what Elliot put out. I, I think a lot of what Salesforce in talking to the company last night, a lot of what they announced was in the works before all this activist involvement became real. Um, I. But I do think that the activist involvement certainly encourages that. Um, the one thing I think, if you take a step back and you say, okay, listen, they are doing all the things they should do. Okay, what's happened to the stock? Well, the stock was up 30% off the bottom when this started to happen, right? The layoffs, the activist involvement, it's up 30% off the bottom. It's up over 10% today on the back of these announcements, which were coming, hopefully, and they came. So now it trades at about six times next 12 months recurring revenue. And we look at it something like a SaaS company like this, and 5.4 times is what we say is the current recurring revenue is worth. Now they have to grow it to be worth more. The only reason we're on the sidelines, we have a neutral on the stock, is because 
we're kicking ourselves for not upgrading it at a, at one hundred and thirty dollars. <laughs> But it's hard to upgrade it here. It really is. I mean, it, this is this is a good company. It's a great company. Like Mark said, he's built a great company. Oh, by the way, he has enterprise talent. But you're asking, like, who who can be a successor? Mm -hmm. Like Mark could sell big deal. Look at it. He was selling. He's even selling Brian, who, who was hard to sell there. Um, I, 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 it seems like it's already there. So I don't know if the activists. Some of them will stay for the long term, but. I would assume some of them wouldn't, but I, I don't know what they're going to do. I, I really don't, but I wouldn't stay much longer unless I think I can grow. And I don't know that they can. So that's my next question is you have a neutral rating on the stock. What do you need to see in order to upgrade it? Um, either need to see the stock go down a lot. That's one <laughs> thing because everything does come back to valuation or if we believe they really can grow, like I said, they started struggling before the macro economy went south. It's not just macro with them. So if we believe they can sort of rebuild their enterprise talent, which by the way, doesn't happen overnight. It's not gonna happen in a quarter or two. That happens in years. Uh, then uh, we, we, can, we can get more behind the stock.